In this video, we're going to learn about how to draw organic molecules in a way that's effective and quick. And we'll do that by starting with a molecule of aspirin. Um, so aspirin is one of the most widely used painkillers in the world. And so it's really important that we know what its structure is because we need to be able to understand how its structure interacts with the human body to reduce pain. So one way of talking about aspirin in a chemical sense would be to provide a chemical formula. And it turns out if you look that up, you'll find that it is C9H8O4. So that's great, but again, it doesn't tell you what the actual arrangement of atoms is. And so kind of the next step people might do is to draw a Lewis structure to show what the bonding of atoms looks like. The problem with organic molecules such as aspirin, which is actually relatively simple, is that there are just too many ways of combining these atoms together to make kind of a valid Lewis structure. So this one single chemical formula could have you know, many, many different possible isomers that you could draw. And not all of those are aspirin. Turns out this is the Lewis structure of aspirin. Um, in the end, a very simple molecule. But to draw this takes a little bit of time, right? You got to go through, write all the letters out, draw all the bonds, draw all the lone pairs. And so organic chemists have kind of come up with a simplified method of drawing that allows us to produce quicker and more effective structures. And so this method is called line angle drawing. Um, I'll put up the rules right here. So basically, the idea is you take a Lewis structure and you don't write in any of the carbon atoms and you don't write in any hydrogen atoms such as these right here unless they're attached to a non-carbon atom or maybe another way to say this is that you only write in the hydrogen if the atom it's attached to is labeled as well. Another thing that you can do in line angle drawings is to either show none of the lone pairs on an atom or all of the lone pairs on an atom. That's part of an assumption in a line angle drawing. Finally, we try to make these drawings pretty just by using nice regular angles. They're often 120 degree angles. Um, we we'll like to use perfect polygons when it comes to rings. So let me show you what this looks like for aspirin. So again, I don't want to draw any of the carbons. Well, I do want to draw the carbons, but just don't want to label them. So my hexagon there looks like this. So I don't want to call it a hexagon from now on. I want to call it a six-membered ring. On the top here, I have a bond to a carbon, and then that carbon is double bonded to one oxygen and single bonded to another. And the single bonded oxygen has a hydrogen attached. To the right here, looks like I have a single bonded oxygen, single bonded to a carbon that's got a double bonded oxygen and a single bonded carbon on there. And then finally, I was missing some double bonds in my six-membered ring. And so again, if you're looking at this, this is a relatively quick drawing to produce. There's no lone pairs, there's no hydrogens you have to fill in, there's no carbons you have to write. This is a much better way of drawing, and this is the kind of approximation that organic chemists have come up with that is going to strike the best balance between providing a lot of information and being easy and quick to do. When we are doing line angle drawings, there are a few considerations we have to keep in mind. Um, so the first important consideration is that formal charge can really make interpreting these drawings a little bit tricky. So, for example, if I give you this molecule here in its Lewis structure form, I have a formally negatively charged oxygen with, and a formally positively charged carbon. Now, if I go through and draw this as a line angle drawing, what I'm going to get looks like so. Right, so I still label my formal charges. The problem here is now that I don't necessarily have the lone pairs on my oxygen drawn in. So looking at this, it's important to be able to make this connection that a negatively charged oxygen with a single bond on it should have three lone pairs on it. Similarly, I now have a carbon that looks like it only has three bonds coming off of it. So I might be tempted to think there's a hydrogen that's not being shown. But the formal positive charge makes it so that actually there should only be three bonds to carbon. And so this is a kind of, there's going to be a bunch of patterns for either carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, um, depending on if they're positive or negative, that you'll kind of get used to as you do more and more of these line angle drawings. Another major problem with line angle drawings is that by definition, we're trying to force a three-dimensional object onto a two-dimensional sheet of paper. Right? That's kind of a problem with all drawing. And so 
there's a few approaches to dealing with this. So one is to just understand that we are always going to be taking one of two different perspectives or views on our drawings. So the first one is the more common one, which is called a bird's eye view. And that's where we're kind of looking um, like a bird from above down on the molecule. So I'm going to put a molecule over here. So this is a molecule called cyclohexane, C6H12. And so if I take a bird's eye view, it looks like I have a six-membered ring. It looks like um, that's about it. Right? So all of these white spheres here are supposed to be hydrogens. The blacks are supposed to be carbons. So really I have six carbons bonded in a ring and hydrogens attached. My bird's eye view might look like this. This molecule, however, is not flat. If I take it and rotate it around a little, you'll see that there's kind of a wavy nature to it. Parts of it, some of the carbons seem to go up, some of them seem to go down. And so when we're trying to highlight that aspect of the molecule, we do what are called perspective views. So an example of that might look like this. And so the perspective view on a cyclohexane is a topic that we'll address in a future video. But for now, it's important just to understand that these two drawings are referring to the same molecule. We just use them in different context and different times depending on what our goals are. Another important thing that we do with line angle drawings is to use what are called wedges and hashes in our drawings. And so the reason that matters is because if I take a molecule like this one, so I have two hydrogens and then I have a red atom and a yellow atom. Um, I think what you might be able to tell is that if I I'm trying to put this in a 2D plane. I can only get three atoms in a plane at any time around this tetrahedral carbon. And so if my hydrogen, carbon, and hydrogen are in the plane, then this red atom is coming up out of the plane, and the yellow atom is behind the plane. And so there are various situations where that's very important to convey as a concept. And so the way we do that is to draw our molecules like so. So my carbon, I have my hydrogens in the plane, and then in my model here, I have the red atom coming towards the camera, towards me, and when that happens, we use a wedge. So I'll just put in a generic atom there. And then I have the yellow atom kind of behind the plane of the drawing, and so I'll use a hashed bond for that. And so this will become very relevant when we get to the video on stereochemistry. Um, but for now, just kind of recognize that the wedge is trying to tell you something that's closer to you and the hash is trying to tell you something that's further away. One final comment on wedges and hashes. It is not okay to draw things like so. because this could be interpreted several different ways. This is not an appropriate way to use wedges and hashes. You always want an atom that has both a wedge and a hash to have those two kind of wedge and hash bonds next to each other. So you always put you know, if the atoms are in the plane together and then the two bonds that are not in the plane next to each other.